Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna talk about a new 3D tool. It's called Spline. It's kind of like a web-based 3D tool. It's super, super simple to use. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So the niche for Spline, as far as I understand, it's kind of like a web-based 3D tool. And I think it's also mainly designed for people who don't like really do 3D or just do tiny bits of 3D because it's super, super, super easy to use. If you can use Photoshop, you can probably use this. So it really gets out of your way and, and it just lets you create fun experiences. It works collaborative, so kind of like Google Docs, you can just work together in the same document. You can do like 3D modeling and a bit of sculpting, some animation, interactivity. And yeah, it's just in his baby foot, baby steps. I don't know how to call it. It just, they just got started. So I feel over the next couple of years, they release a lot more features. Let's jump in and start create some experiences. So first you can download Spline, but you can also use it in your browser. Um, I've downloaded it, but it's, it's up to you. So when we get into Spline, there's a few scenes they created already. So you can start with those and you can have a look at how they created certain things and how to set up the scenes, how to set up the materials and, and objects. And so that's a good way to get started. So like here, you can see the scene that they created. And this is a good time to start talking about the navigation. So if you hold Alt and left mouse button, you can like, uh, tumble around the scene then middle mouse button you kind of move the objects and with your scroll wheel you can just zoom in and out so like most 3d applications i guess and then in the left section you have your objects so we have two spheres here some lights the floor the rectangle and the cube and on the right side you have the edit menu for the objects or if you click away from the scene, you get your global settings. So you can turn on the wireframe, for example, or turn it off and you can turn off the grid. Um, so that's it, like it works super simple. And let's start creating a scene from scratch. So if you want to start creating models in Spline, it's really simple. You've got a few different objects here. You can start with that. Let me delete this rectangle. And if you hit the plus button, you get kind of all the primitives they have. So maybe let's start with a helix. And here you have all the properties for the shape. So if I increase the Y values, you get a longer spline. If I increase the X, it doesn't seem to do much, but if I increase the Z, it does do stuff. So it's just some basic properties. And they have object specific parameters here. So for the spline, you obviously wanna dial in how many kind of circles this has, which they call revolution here. They have the size, these are the faces you get. So if you turn on wireframe, and then if I click on it, you can see if I increase this, we'll get more geometry on the objects. So that's what that is. Then there's a couple of more properties. These are like the soft edges on the outsides and that's, that's kind of it, like it's it's very basic. If we get a sphere, I can show some basic modeling techniques. So when you go to the smooth and edit uh, button, you get this menu and you can like increase the subdivisions here, for example, don't have to. And right now we can start like deforming the actual geo of the polygons so it's a very easy way to do some poly modeling so that's the thing you can do also if you hit this let me undo this when you hit this button you can start sculpting so you probably want more subdivisions for this so maybe let me increase two and now you can start sculpting the mesh so it has some basic tools i don't think they are brushes for now but i'm sure they might be working on that they just have the grab tool the grab sculpt the um, pull sculpt, I guess it's called, and draw clay. I don't really know what this one is, but they have a smooth one as well. So if, if you mess up your mesh, then you can just smooth it out like this. So yeah, some, some basic uh, sculpting tools in there as well, which is very handy. 
And then lastly, if you want to create multiple objects of something, let's create a quick box and scale it up a little bit. Maybe make it 100 by 100 by 100. And we have clone the tools here. Just like Cinema 4D, you can clone radially, increase the counts. I can increase the radius of it and I can hide the base. So the one it's cloning from and you can do it linearly as well and on the grid. So just some very easy tools to have duplicates of an object. It's actually quite fast. I'm quite surprised how fast it is for kind of like a web-based tool. I'm just saying that and I think it's crashing now at the moment, but <laughs> still it's not bad for a tool like this to have kind of this many objects in the viewport. So that that's another thing you can do. And those are kind of like the modeling tools, to be honest, like it's it's very simple, very basic. And I think that's, that's what it made for as well. It, it obviously doesn't try to be ZBrush or <laughs> Uh, Blender or anything like that. It has its own niche, uh, which I think is really great. So let's delete this and let's start talking about materials. So if you select the object, then you have a material section here. And the way materials work is you have an individual material and then you kind of stack materials on top of another. So let's show this by first exploring the materials. So here you can set the color it's kind of like photoshop in terms of how it works you can set some alpha as well on the materials and you can set how strong this is and if you hit this arrow button going down you get different types of shaders so for example you have a glass kind of shader which is a bit hard to see now because there's not much happening <laughs> around it but it actually works quite well in certain scenes maybe if i make my background a bit brighter and then select it and maybe put a object behind then now you can see what it kind of does it, it it refracts kind of the objects around it and it does it so quite nicely obviously it's not realistic uh, but it's not meant to be and therefore i think it does a really decent job of creating some refractions now you can play with the index of refraction as well, the thickness of the material. So you create some different type of refractions and the blurriness of the refractions. So it's quite cool tools to play around with. I think it's kind of a cool look <laughs> for this kind of web-based stuff work. The cool thing what you can do with these materials is you can stack them. So for example, underneath we have a light material. So this is the thing that reacts to the lights in the scene and you have different versions for that so this is like standard 3d stuff you have lambert Fong, physical and tune and yeah you can play around with these values and you can increase the roughness of the reflections and all that it's like standard standard stuff but then you can kind of multiply these effects so if i multiply the glass by this you can see it kind of like overlays it a bit on top of one another so it's really like Photoshop layers in terms of how this works, which I think is quite cool. Another one that is really cool to work with as well is Fresnel effects. So basically Fresnel is the, the more straight you look at an object, it will have a certain color and then towards the edges, it will change color. So it's all based on the angle of the polygons towards the camera. And with this, like create some really cool effects so you can kind of colorize these objects like around the edges. So that's definitely a cool one to play around with. And lastly, you have noises. You can import images as well. Uh, so that's a really cool one. And you can also have depth values. So you can see here now it's in the Y axis. You can see it changes these colors. So with these ones, you can create some really cool effects as well. Uh, so you can make it linear you can get these gizmos in the viewport as well which i think is quite cool so you can like really interactively play around with these values so yeah that's materials in a nutshell and then lastly because this is a web-based tool it allows you to animate things in a web-based way so what i mean with that is you could create states so this was a base state and now if we click on our state, uh, you can change values. So for example, I can up the scale of this object. 
And now if I click back in base state, you can see these two are different. So what I can then do is I can trigger an event and I can make it a star, I can make it a mouse hover, for example. And then I say when the mouse hovers over this object, over the object helix, then trigger this state. And you can cycle it, so it kind of goes back and forth like a uh, looping animation. And you can repeat it as well. It's in and out, you can up the duration a bit, and you can set delays. And now when we hit this play button, you can see when I'm hovering over it, it slowly starts increasing. It's probably a bit slow. <laughs> I can reduce the duration for it. But I think that's the cool thing about a tool like this. It, it makes it so easy to just set up some uh, quick interactivity that you can instantly preview and you can work with multiple people on this as well. I think the thing they should allow a bit is a bit of padding on the hover states because if you don't directly hit the object then you're kind of off so sometimes when this object starts moving it's a bit hard to keep your mouse on it. But yeah I think it's a cool way to yeah have some quick interactive fun setups and that's what I like about the tool it doesn't try to be blender it doesn't try to be cinema 4d those are more like offline kind of tools it just makes it easy to create some quick fun shapes and throw some interactivity at it and yeah it's a very new kind of like interesting experience there's a few things you can play around with with these states so not everything is animatable and if you go to their documents on their website they have a docs section and it brings you to this notion document that basically describes all the functions they have so it's a super easy way to reference what you can do and what you can't do and if we browse to the interaction section here you can see animatable animatable properties so currently you can animate the position rotation skill size the material layers and soon they have the custom shape properties those will be these object specific parameters we spoke about and so currently you can only tweak around with this position skill rotation and the materials but yeah as, as i said it's a very new tool so i have no doubt that soon they will start implementing more features and once you're happy with the scene you can just export it and the cool thing is you can get a public url so if we copy this to our browser and we should be able to just see this scene and you can see we have a scene our interactivity works so it is also cool if you're sending stuff to like a client or friends or whatever you can just really easily share a link with them and they can just see it straight in the browser then you can also embed this content so here you get an iframe so you can just implement this for example on your website if you want a cover or like a header kind of section with some interactive 3D. You can now super easily do this with this tool. And yeah, they have some other web content and React. React's like a program language for the web. So you can do that as well. You can export GLTF. So that's a 3D format. So that's quite cool. So you can generate 3D objects in here, export as a GLTF. You can import it in Houdini, in Blender, in Cinema 4D. And some tools allow you to make AR experience as well with uh, GLTF so that's a really cool option they have and you can export images as well so yeah you can just export an image of your scene <laughs> if you just want like a thumbnail or something and you can export a mp4 as well and a web and, and a gif and an image sequence of your scene so you can kind of record uh, whatever you created so yeah that's a tool in a nutshell if you want to see more about it, I would definitely go to the website and the tool's really well documented as well. So if you want to see what you can do with it, then definitely explore this Notion document. And that's it for this week. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.